Okay, boys and girls, welcome back. Today we're going to continue with chemical formulas. We're going to do something called percent composition. Sometimes it's called percent by weight. And the other thing we're going to do is called the empirical formula. We'll eventually get to something called molecular formula, but I think that'll actually be on the next video. Now, percent composition is pretty straightforward. In fact, it's pretty easy. You're going to like doing this. Um, it's pretty much what it says it is. It's the percent by weight of an element in its compound. Now, you need to know a couple of things. First of all, you need to know the formula for the compound. If you can't write the formula, you can't find the molecular weight of the compound, and you don't know how many atoms of each element are in that compound, so it's, it's trouble. So you have to know how to write formulas. If you don't, you need to go back to some previous videos on formula writing, review them, and make sure that you know how to write formulas from the name of a compound. Okay, and then we're going to calculate what's called the mass percent or weight percent of its constituent elements. So let's just jump right into it by doing example 15. I want to find the percent um, uh, of each element in sodium sulfate. Now, I could have written out the name sodium sulfate, just like that, and I could have made you come up with the formula. And so you should know that that's Na2SO4. So the first thing you need to do is write the formula for the compound. The second thing we need to do is find its molecular weight, which we know how to do. The molecular weight of this compound consists of two sodiums. Each sodium is 22.99 grams per mole. We get that directly off the periodic table. It's the atomic mass of the element. And we have a sulfur, 32.07 grams per mole and four oxygens. Each one is 16.00 grams per mole. I'm going to use my cheap calculator today. Uh, 22.99 times 2, okay, so I have 45.98 grams from my sodium, plus 32.07 from my sulfur, plus 4 times 16, that's 64.00 from my oxygen. So the formula weight of that compound is 142 0.05 grams per mole. Okay, it's 100% of the weight. Of course, it consists of three elements. Now, I want to find the percent by weight of each element. So first, I'm going to tackle my sodiums. And so I have to take the weight of my sodium, which is 2 times 22.99. And then I'll divide that by the weight of the entire compound. Then we're t we'll turn that into a percentage by multiplying it by 100 or, you know, scooting the decimal over two places. So 2 times 22.99, so there's the weight of my sodium again, divided by 142.05, and then we'll multiply by 100, and we have 32.37%. Okay, so that's the percent by weight of my sodium in my compound, sodium sulfate. I have four sig figs on top, five on the bottom, so I can have four in my answer. Let's do the same for sulfur. Now, sulfur, we have 32.07 grams of that in my compound, divided by the weight of the compound, times 100. And let's see what we get for that. Let's clear that out. 32.07 divided by 142.05 times 100. It looks like that's 22.58% sulfur. So far, so good. Now we can find the percentage of the last element the same way. We can take the weight of four oxygens divided by the weight of the compound. Or, isn't it true that the sum of the percentages by weight of each element has to add up to 100% um, of the overall weight? So another way I could do it is I could start with 100 and take away the percentage of the other elements. So I'll take away 32.37% because that's the amount of sodium. And I'll take away 22.58%. That's the weight of my sulfur. Now whatever's left over will be the weight of uh, percent by weight of my oxygen. So 100 minus 32.37 minus 22.58. And if I've done my math right, 45.05% of that would be oxygen. Okay. That's how we find percent by weight. Now when you do assignment 24, you're going to see about three or four of these you're going to have to do. Okay? 
once again, another way to calculate the percentage of the last element is to do it just like we did the other two. I could take 4 times 16 divided by 142.05, and I should get the same percentage. All right. Now, as always, you guys are more than welcome to pause the video and try the next example without my help, and I would strongly encourage you to do that. So we have scandium 3 nitrate. Go ahead and try to write its formula, find its molecular weight, and then find the percentage of each element. And then press play, and you'll see me do it for you. So go ahead and try that now. All right. Welcome back. Number one, we have to write the formula. Remember? So scandium 3 means it's scandium 3 plus. Nitrate is a polyatomic ion, NO3 negative. So the formula is SC parentheses NO3 3. I need three nitrates to balance out the three positive charge from my scandium. Now we'll find the weight. And you know what? I don't know the weight of scandium offhand, so i got to look that one up. So it says 44.96 grams per mole, right there. So my scandium is 44.96 grams per mole. I have three nitrogens, so 14.01 for each nitrogen. And I have nine oxygens, so 9 times 16.00. So let's add those up, and we'll see what we get, okay? Let's go uh, 9 times 16.00, so that's the weight of my oxygens, 144, the overall weights from oxygen. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply by 40, or not multiply, we're going to add the weight of three nitrogens, which would be 3 times 14.01, which is 42.03. Hopefully I did that right. And then I'm going to add the weight of my scandium, 44.96. So I get 230. 0.99 grams per mole. Please check my work. Sometimes I've been known to make mistakes. In fact, I think I want to do that over again just for fun. So there's nine oxygens, nine times 16, 144 for my oxygens, plus three times 14.01 is 42.03, plus 44.96 gives me, oh, 230.99. Okay. I did it right, so I feel pretty good about that. Now let's find the percentage of each element by weight. I'm going to take my 44.96, that's the weight of my scandium, divided by the total weight of the compound, 230.99, and that will give me my percent by weight of scandium. So 44, no, let's clear that, 44.96 divided by 230, whoops, let's try that again. Uh, 44, dude, I'm having a hard time here, 44.96 divided by 230.99 gives me 19.46% uh, scandium by weight. Okay, now we'll do the nitrogen. So we have 3 times 14.01, there's my 42.03, divided by 230.99, and that gives me 18.20%. Oh, I didn't show the work, did I, for nitrogen? So remember, I took 3 times 14.01 divided by my 230.99. Okay, and the last element I like to do it the easy way. I'm going to start with 100%. Subtract out the percentage of the other elements, so 19.46 and 18.20. So let's see what we get. 100 minus 19.46 minus 18.20. Looks like I get 62.34% of that compound is from oxygen. Okay, pretty straightforward. You guys okay with this? It's not too bad, is it? All right, now we're going to shift gears and do something called empirical formula. And you will see that empirical formulas are the opposite of percent composition. In other words, instead of ending with a percentage, we're going to start with a percentage. Instead of starting with a formula, we're going to end with a formula. Now, the empirical formula, kiddos, is the lowest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. In Technically, it's moles of atoms in a compound. So, for instance, benzene has a molecular formula of C686. 
That's not the lowest whole number ratio. The whole lowest whole number ratio is CH, so that would be my empirical formula. H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, is a molecular formula. Its empirical formula is HO. And then you're going to find that sometimes the molecular formula and empirical formula are the same thing because they're both the lowest whole number ratio. Let's do another one real quick. If I gave you the molecular formula for glucose, C6, H12O6, that's the molecular formula, what would the empirical formula be? So I'm going to call it EF for empirical formula. Well, if you said C, H2O, you would be correct, because the lowest whole number ratio is 1 to 2 to 1. Got it? Okay. So, I'll take a look at number 17. I gave you 46.56% iron and 53.44% sulfur. That adds up to 100%. Now, from that data, I should be able to find the empirical formula. Now, what I like to do is I like to assume I have 100 grams of the compound. The reason I do that is it makes this next step and its math very simple. What is 46.56% of 100 grams of the compound? Yeah, you're right, 46.56 grams of it would be iron. What is 53.44% of 100 grams of the compound? You're right, 53.44 grams would be sulfur. Now I could really assume any weight, I could assume 22 grams and it would still work. Okay, I would just have to find 46.56% of 22, which I can't do very quickly without a calculator. Nor could I find 53.44% of 22 grams very quickly without a calculator. So number one, assume you have 100 grams of the compound so you can find the weight of each compound or element in that compound. Okay, now we gotta find the lowest whole number mole ratio. Grams, kiddos are not moles. So we need to convert from grams to moles. So we'll go from grams of iron to moles of iron. Don't we always put a one by mole? Then we find the mass of iron by looking at the periodic table. It's 55.85 grams per mole. That's its atomic mass. Let's do the same with sulfur. Go from grams of sulfur to moles of sulfur, and sulfur is 32.07. Okay, now let's find out how many moles of each we have, and then we'll find a ratio. So let's clear that. 46.56 divided by 55.85. That gives me 0.8337 moles of iron. Okay, and 53, oh, let's clear that out. 53.44 divided by 32.07 gives me 1.666 moles of sulfur. Now those are not whole number ratios, so we need to find the whole number ratio. Now we've done a couple of labs like this. How do we find the whole number ratio if I have moles of each element? Yeah, you're right. You divide by the lowest number of moles. So we're going to divide both by 0.8337. Of course, the one on top is 1. Right, 0.8337 divided by itself is 1. And what do you think 1.666 divided by 0.8337 is? Yeah, it's pretty doggone close to 2. It's almost exactly 2. So our mole ratio is 1 to 2. So the empirical formula is Fe, I have one of them, S2. Okay, and we would call that iron 4 sulfide if there was such a beast. Okay, that's how you find the empirical formula. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? So step one, we have to find out how many grams of each element we have. Step two, convert grams to moles. And then step three, divide by the lowest number of moles to get your whole number ratio. Okay, all right, now you try example 18. Once again, you can pause this, go ahead and work it out, and then press play and see how you did, okay? All right, we're back. 36.5% of sodium, that means if I had 100 grams of the compound, 36.5 grams would be sodium. 25.4% sulfur, that means if I had 100 grams, 25.4 grams would be sulfur. And did you remember this part? 
The rest is oxygen. So I've got to find out the grams of oxygen. So remember, 100 minus the other two percentages, 36.5 and 25.4, give me 38.1% oxygen, or 38.1 grams out of 100 grams. So we'll go from grams to moles. I apologize for going a little bit longer on this video, but I, I feel like you guys can handle it. So we're going to go from grams to moles of sodium, grams to moles of sulfur, and grams to moles of oxygen. Okay, sodium 22.99 grams per mole, sulfur is 32.07 grams per mole, and oxygen is 16.00. So let's find the moles of sodium, moles of sulfur, moles of oxygen. Okay. So this is step two. 36.5 divided by 22.99 gives me 1.5, so I'm only allowed three sig figs, nine moles of sodium. 25.4 divided by 32.07 gives me 0.792 moles of sulfur. And then finally, 38.1 divided by 16 gives me 2.38 moles of oxygen. And in the third step, remember, divide by the lowest number of moles, which is 0.792 in, that ca in this case, so that's 1. And then 1.59 divided by 0.792 is pretty doggone close to 2. If it's within a tenth, we'll round it off for you. And 2.38 divided by 0.792 is 3. So my empirical formula, kiddos, is Na2S, there's only one of them, O3. Sodium sulfite. There you go. Okay. Alrighty, folks, we'll wrap this up. Stay tuned. We're going to do molecular formulas next. And maybe I'll do a little bit of assignment 24 for you. Bye-bye.